Hello there, this is Irv Shapiro, aka Dr. Vax, and this is part two of our three-part lithophane series. In part one, we took a photograph, an image, we created a lithophane from it, outputted it as an STL file. We took the STL file, we loaded it into Fusion 360, and created the frame structure around it that we will 3D print. Now in part two, we're going to create a wooden base in the wood shop for this gift, for this trophy. And then in part three, we're going to assemble it all together. Okay, hold on. Let's get started learning something together. As part of the trophy build, the construction of our trophy, we're going to use a wood base. As I mentioned earlier, just because you have a 3D printer doesn't mean you have to use it for everything. So in our case, um, we're going to make the base out of wood. Now I'll be using a variety of tools to do that. Once again, this wood base could be made but with a jigsaw and a little bit of sandpaper. Uh, you don't need to have sophisticated tools in order to do that. For the oak that we're going to use, instead of buying a eight foot long piece of oak, which wouldn't fit in my car and would potentially be heavy and not well finished, I purchased a stair tread. A stair tread is a nice thick piece of oak. It's already nicely finished and therefore it'll make our build a little bit easier. But to add a little bit of pizzazz, because I do have a router, I'm going to put a Roman Ogi, O-G-E-E. -E. That's a contoured shape along the edge. I'm going to take and put that contoured shape along the whole edge of the tread, and then when we cut out the pieces we're going to use for the base, the contour will be the same on every level of the base. Now you'll notice that um, as I was talking about this, this router was not plugged in. These routers are dangerous, you have to use them with care. In addition, you'll notice that my oak board is securely clamped. Once again, in every woodworking video that you see from me, I'll talk about clamping, I'll talk about safety goggles, which are required, and then in case of a router, they actually make uh, quite a bit of noise. So I have my OSHA approved earplugs here that I'm going to put in to make this a bit easier. Okay, we're ready to go, so let me plug in this router. And I have it set at the middle of the speed range. Um, you don't really need to go all the way to the top, and if you go too fast, you're going to burn the wood. So I'm going to carefully get ready to position this on the edge. I'll turn on my router. Okay, let me unplug this router and I will unclamp this board and tip it up so you can see what we did. So we went from a straight edge to this Roman contour along the edge. Uh, we'll actually sand this off uh, when we sand this down a little bit later. Okay, now that I have the measurements that I need for this board, I'm going to cut it to the proper length. Uh, to begin with, I'm not going to assume that the edge that came from the lumber yard is square. So I've clamped my board down and I'm going to take and cut off about an inch or so off the end. Uh, once again, clamped securely. Uh, on the other end, I have it also resting on a table so it won't fall off when I cut it. I'm going to switch to my safety glasses. And now, in using this compound miter saw, I'm going to pull it all the way out. You can see that it slides back and forth. I'm going to pull it all the way out, let the blade come up to speed. I have one hand on the handle. I'm going to make sure I know where the other hand is, nowhere near the cutting area, and then we'll take and cut this off. You'll notice that this Ryobi saw does have an automatic brake, 
So as soon as I release the power, it stopped the blade. And we have a nice, uh, nice clean cut here. Okay, we're ready to see how this is all going to fit together. Now, one of the disadvantages of Tinkercad is that it's hard to dimension things precisely in a way that you can then use them later. In other words, you can't print out a plan from Tinkercad uh, like you can with a higher-end uh, CAD program. So you have to effectively uh, make some drawings, uh, maybe by hand, write some dimensions down, if you're going to build something manually. Now, if you're going to 3D print it, it doesn't matter. What you see on the screen is what's going to come out on the printer. In our case, um, to position the lithophane correctly, uh, this is a sample that actually didn't come out correctly. I have this, this is under extruded quite a bit, but we will fix that. What I did is I took and went to an art supply store and bought some foam board. Foam board is very easy to manipulate, easy to cut. I cut it out so that we can actually see how that might look and where exactly we want to position this on this model. Now, once we do that, we can look at another issue, and that is where are we going to place the light bulb? Let me grab our light bulb. The light bulb that we're going to use is an LED bulb. I bought this on Amazon uh, that just plugs into a USB plug. This is actually a spare Apple iPhone plug. It is remarkably bright, and we have to think about how we're going to position this. So when I put this in position here, what I can see is that the, if I take the base, which is one inch square, and I drill a hole into the base of the first layer of wood and then create a slot, I'll be able to set that in there nicely. So I need to use my model here to more or less position where we're going to want that to go. And we want that hole to be as close to the front as possible because the closer the light is to the source, the better it'll work. So somewhere right about there, we'll make it centered. And now what we're going to do is take and drill a hole completely through this board and then cut a couple slots to it so we'll have a, a slot here. I'm going to drill the hole on a drill press. Once again, could be done with a hand drill. Then you can use a jig jigsaw to cut these slots. I'm actually going to use a bandsaw because I have it available. Okay, let's go on to these next steps, and I'll come back and show you where we're at. Now we have a hole in the board for the base of the light bulb, and we have a slot here. I don't know if you can see it. We have a slot here. So I'm going to take and see if we can fit our light bulb in. And the cord will go through the slot. And the light bulb is a little bit too big to fit in the base probably needs another eighth of an inch, but I don't have a one and an eighth inch bit. So I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to use a rasp to open up this hole a bit. I'm going to start by securely clamping this board down. And we'll clamp this side down also. We will chuck this into our drill. Make sure it comes out a little bit. We'll check the depth. The rasp is about the same depth, so I need to go pretty much all the way down. Now I'm going to take and turn the screw on and just work my way around. Okay, let's see if this fits now that we've made the hole a little bigger. Okay, you can see this fits nicely in the base here. It's a secure fit. That's the advantage of making the hole a little smaller and then rasping it or filing it to make it bigger. Let's try plugging this in. And we'll turn it on. And we can see that illuminates quite nicely. Now we have our lithophane. I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the camera. I'll put this down 
and I'll turn the light on behind it and you can see if we zoom in here we can see that the lithophane is illuminated now so this is going to work out quite nicely okay the print for the trophy is well underway here we're printing both the lithophane and the back at the same time the lithophane on the prusa i3 mk3 and the back on the ender 5. okay that completes the second part of our three-part series on creating a lithophane based gift for my 90 year old father thank you so much for watching please subscribe um, if you found this interesting and look for part three, which will be coming shortly.